Today as conversion lab is, oops, uh, today's conversion lab is uh, all about um, gold mining or mining the, the gold from your, from your data. And so I, what I did was I grabbed a, a data set that I have uh, had access to. Uh, and uh, so let's go through that right now. So, but on the leads side, uh, all that means is, um, is uh, grabbing the lead from sort of download your leads. If you, um, if you um, go that, go on that route, that's the way to, but what I would advise people to do is uh, to um, is to actually add a webhook and send your data to a Google Sheet or Airtable or some sort of database uh, where it's accumulating over a prolonged period, and that's when it adds a lot of value. Um, so obviously, uh, as you all know, if you do send data there, don't just send name, email, phone number, and all the other stuff, but make sure you send all the good stuff that we capture for you and I'll share that because it just it just means that the analysis we're about to do, um, life becomes really easy, right? So the first thing uh, we have is we give you a whole bunch of geo, geo IP data uh, that we provide. Uh, so city, state, um, the, <clears throat> if there's any fraud stuff there, uh, time zone type information, any zip, that's zip of the IP, not, not zip of the person. And if you send both, which is, let's say, if you are asking for postcode or zip code or anything of that sort that in, on a form, then you can compare that to the zip of the IP and so on and so forth. And sometimes you can learn something quite interesting, including all the uh, all the location type data that we have, including longitude, latitude, uh, you know, country name, so on and so forth. Obviously, do send device data across as well, because uh, then you can profile to see conversions via device, uh, browser, um, the OS, and um, and whether it's a mobile device or a desktop device or whatever, tablet. Uh, we do have quite a bit of tracking data as well, but the main one is sitting under tracking V2. Uh, we do track both. This is where all your pixel IDs, your um, in particularly this, uh, those uh, are the most important ones, the, your UTMs. In case you didn't know, uh, if you just code your UTM params to send this across, so the UTM campaign, uh, UTM underscore content, all lowercase, leads will automatically save that value in this here. But to use the variables, you need to just add the underscore tracking in front of it. Uh, and that's and the reason why we add underscore is because that's reserved for us internally. So you can't create fields with underscores or start with underscores. That's something that is, uh, is uh, unique to us. That way we don't ever clash with... Uh, any fields that you might create and constantly adding to this. So over time, we're adding more and more and more stuff to this. So that less and less and stuff that you have to needlessly add. Because obviously everybody uses UTM params. Um, I don't know why we didn't think of it on day one, but there's no point you adding it in. Just code it properly. We'll capture it for you automatically. Uh, of course, everyone has FBC these days, FBP, all the different uh, pixels and, and uh, cookies that are needed. We grab those automatically. Uh, we can do a far better job of it. Plus, we can see if there's error rates and things of that sort, right? So leaving all this aside, this means you're building a fairly rich data set, which you need to push into some system to analyze. I'm going to be using a Google Sheet for that. I mean, or an Excel, I should say. And uh, here's what it looks like. Here's the, uh, here's the data set. Uh, it's um, uh, some sort of energy uh, campaign. Uh, and so on and so forth. All the personal information has been removed. So I know there's no IP address, no phone number, no address, no none of that sort of stuff. Uh, and so, and uh, you can see all that, all the information I shared with you. That's all the, all those extra fields that we provide to you. They're all available here. Right now, this is obviously an Aussie dollar, an Aussie campaign, I should say. And uh, so let's see what that looks like. And then we can uh, do a bit of a deep dive. <clears throat> Very simple pivot table, um, insert, um, pivot table, um, just, well, actually you click here, sort of on this node called pivot table and it automatically just builds this for you. It'll allow you to put a whole bunch of stuff here. I normally put the date field um, at the um, in the values. And the reason for, for doing it that way is because um, that, uh, uh, that captures every data set. So for example, there's not a single line here that does not have a date on it. So all we're doing is we're counting the number of uh, the, the dates. That's why I put them over here. I'm just going to drag and drop all of these across. And so we go back to sort of blank. So in this particular data set, we've got eight, uh, 588 lines. Um, and obviously in your case, it'll be thousands. The reason why I kept it small is because the big data set, it sometimes starts you know processing and you waste time. So for a demo environment, I didn't want to needlessly 
uh, waste uh, time in, uh, but the principle is obviously the same. Uh, then what I do is I normally just grab completed, which means completed is, uh, so this is where it says completed is yes, uh, that field there. Uh, the, you can only see yes here if someone gets to the final uh, node. So if you were to look at a decision tree, it basically means is that they, uh, irrespective of the path they took, they ended up at the bottom here. So that means completed equals yes. So normally that would be conversion, but if you're using some other field, then obviously you can uh, do a, a custom field and you can update that, or, or you can have uh, different uh, DT set fields across the entire uh, de uh, decision tree itself. The other, the other one you can use is captured. Captured is where you use the system email field. And uh, so let's say if you've got email field halfway up the decision, so for example, I've got an email field sitting here. I could use that as my analysis as well. The reason to you do it uh, when you're doing it, um, I am recording, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, the reason to do it uh, to do it uh, further up is, let's say, if you don't have a lot of data, or if you're having a whole bunch of people who have given you the email, but then they're kind of dropping off, and you kind of want to see, like, listen, you know, what what does my initial data look like? Uh, you can actually, uh, you know, use uh, captured rather than completed as your proxy for conversion. So your conversion is any, anyone who gives you email. And then as you get more data, then you can move the uh, the analysis down. Just like how sometimes people put a conversion pixel further up their, their funnels, just to trigger a lot more uh, early feedback to, to Google or Facebook or the pixel, and therefore give you more. Obviously it's not a, uh, sometimes it, it, it can go wrong as well because just because someone has given you email doesn't mean that they convert. Um, so, uh, but it's a good it's a good enough proxy in most cases, right? Uh, but with that caveat that it's not perfect. So if we look at that data, uh, we can see that there's 588 fields. I've just added in completed yes. And what that's telling me is that in this particular uh, in this particular decision tree or this um, small data set, uh, we have a, a conversion rate. Um, so if I want to calculate that, I'm going to just going to go equals uh, that uh, divided by that. And it tells me that there's a 12% conversion on this particular uh, on this particular. Uh, 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 in this particular data set that, that I have, or this funnel or campaign or decision tree that we have right here, right? And that's our very first thing we're gonna look at. Now, I'm gonna leave completed there and let's uh, start looking at some other stuff, right? So normally what I do is I wanna look at, um, uh, let me just make that a bit bigger, one second. All right, cool. Quickly do a search, I'm gonna do country, uh, oops, C-O-U-N. And I'm going to do country name. I'm going to add that in my row. So now I'm going to see my split of how much traffic came from uh, what countries. So that's, uh, I believe that's Turkey. Uh, there's Germany. There's a bunch of UK, US, and a, and a bunch of stuff that was not uh, was not identified um, as Sorry. well. Sorry. Yep. Just to confirm, when you're downloading it, you just get rid of the captured equals true, and then it'll show all the data That points. is correct. That's it. Cool. Absolutely. And so in our cross tabulation, we've got just country. Now, let's say if I want to look at uh, uh, region now. So let's look at uh, region. So in, uh, in uh, this is in Australia. Oh, it's Aust uh, oops, not date. Sorry. Uh, yeah, region name. So now I can see where my conversions are coming uh, from countrywide. So I've got a bunch of data coming outside of the country. Now, if you are, uh, let, hang on a second. Let me just remove this. Let's say if you are doing, uh, you know, some analysis, you can, really easily see uh, that we've got uh, we've got uh, essentially that uh, minus uh, that we've got 60 impressions uh, or in our case uh, that uh, divide by uh, this 10% uh, of our traffic is currently being wasted outside the country now in this particular case because I think they've it's, it's a very small campaign is why it's 10% but when you run at scale you're going to see numbers up to 30 40 percent sometimes. And so, which means that that Facebook or whatever platform this is, I believe this is largely, uh, I'm, I'm, I think this is Facebook traffic. Um, so you're seeing, uh, you know, anywhere from up to 30% of your traffic sitting from uh, sitting outside, uh, from outside, um, uh, outside your, your target area. And the goal here would be, how do I slash that 30% that of ad spend wasted or 10% of ad spend wasted in this case? and bring it down to zero as much as possible. Obviously, you never really get to zero. So even if you slash half of it, 
um, that's still a significant difference. So let's say if you're spending a million dollars a month and 30% is coming outside the country, that's 300 grand. Um, you know, that's a Ferrari a month or half a Ferrari, maybe, depending on the country you're living in, that's being wasted um, on uh, or just, yeah, just, just straight from your bottom line, right? That's just pure wastage. The goal here would be how do I shrink that down to down to zero? And and uh, and one way to do it is, uh, or the one way that I know that we can slash about half of it, uh, you know, it's not perfect, uh, where you add uh, your country. So in this case, I would add Australia as as an inclusion and go and add every other country um, as an exclusion. Normally, it's a pain in the ass to, to do it the first time. So save it as a as a um, uh, as an audience or save it as a, as a as a targeting option. I think there's an option to save it. And most platforms have that. And then you can just apply that every time you you do it because you individually adding every country is, is, is actually quite painful. So do it only once, save it as a targeting option, which is uh, the global uh, country that is not Australia or not US or not whatever your, your country is. And uh, that way you can apply that very easily. So that would be the, the first thing that to, to look at uh, this sort of thing. All right, any questions on this before we, we, we deep dive a bit more? No questions, that's brilliant. Cool, All right, awesome, cool. All right, so I let's have a look that... at, yeah, sorry, yeah, go on. Hey, I've done this recently, as I told you. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting to see the data afterwards. Do you find it still comes through that um, Facebook, Google still push through fake leads and you have to do a custom it, win? Correct, it, it, it does not go to zero. The way to then your so your first layer is is that that targeting option the country level targeting option it's not perfect by any means uh, for whatever reason uh, I guess you know quarterly earnings reports uh, <laughs> might add a bit of uh, pressure to wanting to uh, not remove all of it um, I mean it's 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 it. I would find it amazing that, that the Facebook and Google don't know this is not not traffic from the from the right country um, so. Uh, it's there, um, and the your, your second layer would be to add all of these people. So what I would do is I would add these people uh, as a as some sort of event, a conversion event of some sort. Do a one, two, three percent lookalike or whatever, and then add those as an exclusion. That will be your second layer. But whenever you do that, because we just don't know what the impact of this is, you want to always segregate that out in a small campaign and validate the concept first before you just uh, apply it to your main campaign. You don't want to destroy anything you. That's currently working. So you want to do this. Uh, and it goes without saying, obviously, everybody on this call is is uh, is mature and has been running, you know, large volumes of traffic. So you'd really know that to do that. But I see a lot of uh, am amateur moves where like, oh, yeah, cool. Nick said this. So let me just go destroy my campaign. You know, like, it doesn't work that way. So if anything that's working, leave it. Even if it has got 30 percent, you know, bleed coming through or 30 percent of, of crap coming through, you know, and if it's still profitable, don't touch it set up another campaign to validate the concept and then slowly move your budgets over and then turn the campaign off at some later stage when it stops working. Either the ads run out of gas or whatever the reason would be that it stops working. All right, that's the, that's the pragmatic way of managing all of this sort of stuff, especially Facebook. Any questions? It, is, bit of, um, it seems to have dropped our CPL already. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, so wait. Uh, yeah. So it takes anywhere from four to seven days to truly see its impact. Uh, on on the Facebook side, I've seen anywhere from four to seven days. Um, Google is about five or so days before you start seeing a a a positive impact. Or whether you screwed up, you know. So that's why I say you know isolate it because um, it's yeah, yeah uh, it's it's so random. It works most of the time, but once again, with a lot of this stuff, you know, you can hardly state that it's like a like it's going to work all the time. <laughs> Yeah. Have you, have you, sorry, Go have forward. you noticed any um, advantage plus audiences in terms? No, of actually, I've, I've, I, I don't know anyone who's can who's made them work at scale. That's not to say that that they don't work at scale, but I don't know anyone who's who's uh, who's been able to make it work at scale. So yeah, I'm, I mean, unless you're going to tell me otherwise, um, did that work so for you? Better, it's better not to run them. You thinking? Yeah, at least, or or if you are, you know, test it on the side. But I, I don't know anyone who's doing, let's say, you know, you know, like you know, mil a month or five mil a month spend level that's doing that using that. Now, having said that, 
uh, any new stuff when it comes out, the 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 uh, the penetration of that or the usage of that, it, you know, does scale over time. So I'm, I'm uh, not, not going to say that it doesn't work. Um, and obviously, you know, these things get improved over time as well. But for now, I think the the big value add is just in just doing this basic stuff, uh, and then um, and then layering that stuff on top um, at, a, at, a, at a later date. I would not just rush into it just because it's uh, someone said it works. No, uh, because. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're talking the same thing. The, the targeting option on Facebook, when you go to placements, there's an advantage plus audience and there's the manual placement. Yep. I think um, by default, it pushes you towards the advantage plus, which I think we've been running for a bit, which seems to be work. It is, it is working okay. okay. I'm wondering if you should switch to a manual audience while it's tested. Well, okay. Well, um, run it as a small test and see if that comes back with something better. That would be the only answer here. Uh, see, because because the the number of the flavors of campaigns that people are running, I, I often find that it's 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 not uh, universally applicable enough to state that yeah, just because I found five guys who who made it work, all of a sudden you should make it work too, because there's a good chance that it might not work for you. So so if you find something that that works for you, then my then normally what I would suggest you, that you do is let me just make that a bit bigger is to keep running it that way and then run a small test with the with the other alternative and see what happens. So for example, um, there, was a, there was a mastermind that I went to and there was a guy who was saying that he finds audiences uh, using ChatGPT. And so what he's doing is he just says, hey, ChatGPT, give me Facebook targeting options for, you know, whatever, X, Y, Z um, site. And it gives you all kinds of weird options, like, you know, go do targeting for golf, or go targeting for this. And what and what he does, he he just sets them up as as a, as a um, as an interest uh, targeting option, uh, runs some ads, and then has like reveal bot or one of those things to turn it off automatically. So his role then becomes the job becomes just set up lots of campaigns and have the machine uh, come in and turn it off five days later. I think he's got a some sort of formula like you know uh, you know uh, you know two X ROAS or whatever over seven days or or whatever the formula is that he's found works for him. Um, and then he just, and then that reveal bot or whatever that automated system rule thing comes in and turns it off. And so now I don't know anyone who's going to be patient enough to do that. So, so the, his point is, listen, I'm just going to throw these things out there. I'm going to set up, you know, lots of campaigns. Most of them are going to bomb. And and that's what he, and, and that was actually true. Uh, you know, most of the stuff just fails and then some of the stuff just works, but what he's doing is he's got this broad audience, which is bringing him bulk of the bulk of his conversions. And then he's got these little things on the side that are performing really well. So what it does, it, it drops the blended CPA um, or mm -hmm. blended cost per lead or cost per whoa, 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 uh, whatever the, the, the cost metric is. And so you have a 10% advantage over your competitors or you have a 20% advantage over competitors, which is material at scale. And yeah. that would be the way to do it. Paul, do you have a question? Yeah, no, well, obviously, with the 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 different countries and the traffic from, from different countries, Josh, without obviously going into detail of the, the campaigns, but are there were the countries that you were getting, are they were they so far removed of the target countries? Were they like complete out there or or were you calling out the country in the ad initially? Or is it just um, like people I think we are calling out the campaign country in the ads and you can see yeah. it by the uh, yeah, our ads are very specific, so people okay. are being targeted and they're still clicking on it. Um, so, so Paul, just to answer that question, there was one campaign that I reviewed out of, out of New Zealand, and they got stuff from like Azerbaijan, and, <laughs> like nice. I mean, it's like it's yeah. it's obvious. It's obviously Facebook's that that they 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 are. It's it's yeah. all it's all kind of premeditated letting letting it through, isn't it? It's not like yeah, they yeah, because, because yeah. So 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 certainly not. A German campaign with Austrian traffic. Yeah. 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 It's not there is, no. it could just be similar enough. No, I agree. I just yeah, it's sneaky, sneaky. It, it could be that the audiences are similar though. That's what I was thinking with Advantage Plus, because that's what it says in its, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's thing. It's 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 possible, which is why if you add those country exclusions, uh then then it should exclude it because obviously so let's say it finds someone who's from the audience sitting in some third country, but Clearly, that person's not not in Australia, so I should should be removed. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, 
and and but but the numbers are so great that you can't even put them in like oh some Aussie guy who's, who's gone for a holiday, you know, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to to Turkey and uh, and Germany and and all that stuff. In this case, yeah, ten percent. I mean, ten uh, percent Australia is not traveling overseas. I can. Get... <laughs> well, I don't. I didn't get the full one because I didn't do the got rid of the capture. But I had like twenty percent of traffic was non Australian. Yeah, on um, the non captured traffic, which is which is significant. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. not. We're not paying for that anymore. That increases the margin quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, like it was one solo campaign. They asked me to review it. Like, oh, Nick, conversion's gone down. Can you have a look? I had a look. It was like 90% of the traffic on that day came from the came from outside the country. Wow. Yeah. It was a YouTube, Thank it was a YouTube campaign. Yeah. Now it's yeah. it's it's not that it does it every day and all day and every day, because because it's it's quite volatile. But there are days when when you actually see like in this case it was ninety percent of traffic came outside at like a like a like a I don't know like a three four mil a month ad spend level. Yeah. And so oh, so, so they, they, yeah yeah so so uh, normally I get a message saying hey did you guys do something to lead to my conversions drop I'm like listen man we're not the only reason why conversions drop. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's look at traffic source. Um, anyway, and so in this case in this case. Uh, it was something outside, yeah. And obviously, you want to have a look because uh, just want to make sure nothing went wrong somewhere. Because uh, we do do, you know, many many updates. Um, and so, anyway, we had a look, and it was it was just shitty traffic from outside the country. Right now, so I'm going to move on to the next one here, which is uh, I'm just going to look at region. Uh, and so I'm going to look at region name here. All right. So what you can see here is so let's say for example, if you are <clears throat> if you are looking at to seeing. And let's say if you're not looking region level data, and and sometimes you're going to see that inside Facebook or some other platform, you might have to you know do all kinds of fancy whiz bang you know analysis and filters and all that stuff. You know pivot tables super easy. What you can see here is you can see that you know conversions. Obviously, this data is not not significant because obviously you have uh, uh, you know it's, the data set's not big enough. But you can see here there's there's fourteen percent. I'm just going to see what the, this one looks like. Uh, that's nine percent, and then uh, Victoria in this case uh, has got uh, has got uh, you know fourteen percent. But look at the other thing here. Let's say this is this is an Aussie targeting campaign. Um, Facebook is actually not giving any traffic to Western Australia, and it's a it's a significant uh, buyer of whatever whatever solo whatever energy whatever things this this thing is. So I, I I don't know what their targeting option was. Maybe they've excluded WA, but let's say for argument's sake if they haven't. This could clearly tells you that that you know uh, I mean that Queensland is not is not uh, you know you know is not uh, is is not one point eight percent of of Aussie traffic. It's much higher. So so it's actually it's a, you're actually seeing that Facebook's targeting is giving you a very lopsided distribution of traffic. Now, if you if you know that, what can you do? Obviously, you maybe ex extend the ad spend or whatever. Maybe change some targeting options. But your next filter from here would be to do state level campaigns, where where you may keep running a national one, and then you'd say like, listen, I want to do just a Queensland campaign and see if I can change if if it starts giving me more traffic. In this case, obviously, then you're going to put every other state or province or whatever it is as an exclusion, and then every other country is an exclusion. But you won't even think of that. If you weren't looking at this data, because because this kind of analysis is not that easily available, um, especially in apps and stuff, because of the, because you think about it, like I mean, in the, the flexibility of a pivot table is just drag and drop stuff, and that's it. Within about you know a quarter of a second or one or two seconds, it gives you the uh, gives you the analysis of what it looks like. Um, does that does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Awesome. All right. So let's look at the at the uh, country region option. I'm going to take uh, a country out and just uh, leave it at, at region. And then let's start looking at some of the other stuff here. All right. So we got longitude and latitude. Uh, let's go and see, um, because I, I want to show the how you can slice and dice the data as well. Uh, let's have a look at, um, uh, let's look at brand. All right. Right. Um, maybe I'll remove region as well. So this is the 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 brand of um, of uh, of of conversions, and you want to start seeing if you're seeing any lopsided conversions. Here, looks looks reasonably looks okay. 
but you can see that bulk of it is obviously Apple and 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 Samsung. But we are getting traffic from you know distribution of the other place. Doesn't say too much, but I you know why. Well, let's have a look at this and see is the is the device uh, a, a significant uh, there. So 16% versus, so, and, so Android is obviously looking to be a little bit 3% uh, better, which is, as a percentage wise, is actually uh, quite, quite high. Now let's have a look at uh, region now. I'm just gonna throw region back in here so I can show you, um, sometimes you get some interesting analysis. Oops. So you can, when I drag and drop it, it 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 also so this is um, region uh, by brand, and then if I want to go the other way, I can move my brand on top, and it actually does the region. So it's it's Alcatel, Apple, and you can see the Apple conversions across the different uh, 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 the states and states and territories, uh, and then you're gonna have uh, you know, and then uh, so on and so forth. So Polaroid, wow, I didn't realize uh, Polaroid made uh, phones and stuff. But you can see what the conversions are looking like across Apple, uh, across the different uh, regions. So for example, so let's just look at this. Uh, in, in a larger data set, you might see something a bit more significant. Um, so you can see that in this case, uh, you know, um, they not much of a difference there. And I'm gonna assume that's also not much of a difference. I'm still, I'm just- Sir, I'm looking at this on the um, numbers. Yeah. How are you getting the- um... The, the numbers to pull up here, the yes, yes, no, and the grand total. Oh, that's the completed. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, so so completed is my is my proxy for conversion. Because ah, okay. they, they, they got to the bottom. And that's coming from uh, from here. That's the, the the yes column, or the sorry, the completed column. Completed yes means there's the, the, this, this particular guy or gal, whoever it is, finished uh, the DT. Okay, I'm with you now. So that's my proxy for, for for conversion. So I put that in mind. I normally put that on the column side. Obviously you can do it um, like vice versa. If you prefer to see your data this way, then you can do it uh, that way too. Um, but I prefer the other way because uh, then you, you gotta go scroll across and I find that painful. So I'm just gonna add that here and bring that right here. All right, so lots of flexibility. Obviously there's no way of breaking this. You can drag and drop and all that sort of stuff in any way possible. And obviously moving those things around. Uh, as well. Now let's have a look at uh, conversions by um, uh, by one of the other factors that was sitting here, which was uh, which was uh, the campaign, right? Now in this particular case, we have campaign um, we have campaign ID. Uh, let's make that a bit bigger. We've got um, two campaigns, two different types of campaigns here, and now we can see uh, that we have a campaign level. Um, there you go. One campaign did 19%, uh, the other one did 32%. Right? And there's obviously a bunch of stuff that wasn't campaigned properly. Now, this is an indicative couple of things. Either uh, this is organic traffic or maybe, uh, or it could be that that uh, the URLs, the, 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 uh, the exit URLs or the ad URLs or the destination URLs have been badly coded or not coded properly or uh, uh, was, something was missed. So very quickly you realize like, hang on a second, but we can also see that nothing converted there. So that could be uh, traffic that's either badly converted outside the country, could be SEO traffic, could be any, anything else. So I'd wanna go and maybe have a look at that a bit bit deeper. So we can do that, all right? So let's have, go, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's go down that rabbit hole. I'm gonna go down here and uh, come and pick uh, my country, right? Only like, oh, I wonder if that's, uh, where is that traffic coming from? So I can see now, that US, so you can see now that my paid traffic, a uh, little bit came from Turkey, some of it came from the US. And then all this is all the blank stuff that's coming here from outside the country. So I uh, still can't work out what that is. That's okay, I'm gonna put that back up here. And I'm gonna go into looking at my device or something, or the, uh, where is that device, device, device? Uh, where'd it go? Um, right, so I'm gonna look at uh, device type. Right? And maybe it will catch something there. So we can see that uh, all of this is coming from a smartphone. Once again, it's not part of not partisan campaign. Um, so let's take that back out there. So once again, we, we're not able to find too much about what this is. So I, I'd go and look at, uh, in a bit more depth at where this traffic is coming from. Uh, you know, obviously a country, we saw that it's uh, it's split across and perhaps it's just SEO traffic. 
And so now you may want to consider like, do I, do I add my URLs or do I change my, my, my URLs on my, on my organic campaign just so I can capture this a bit better or, or, or not, or maybe it's just a, so something to investigate, right? Once again, you can see here that you, imagine if you could remove this, then, then what? So it's obviously not coming from some campaign. Well, hopefully it's not paid traffic. If there's a paid traffic, then you're fine. So true. So the true conversion now you can see here based on this is uh, you know you're looking at a like a like a 19 and 32 percent conversion rate, which is probably not a bad campaign or what or where wherever this came from, right? So that uh, tells us. Oh yeah, let's let's go further down the UTM uh, rabbit hole here, and let's go and check uh, check go further down and see what else we find in the UTM stuff. So I'm gonna go and see. Uh, you know, maybe you know, let's go and put medium and uh, low, let's go and put uh, source, right? So now what I'm seeing here is there you go, All right? So I'm seeing uh, CPC, F Facebook. So that's coming from Facebook. That's also coming from Facebook. I don't know where this is coming from, but that's not converting. So you, maybe, maybe it's not Facebook. Maybe it's just organic. In which case, this is not, not, not a bad campaign. But very quickly, you can start seeing what's actually going on here. Uh, maybe I'll even add in term. Hopefully uh, they've got some ad URL sitting in there. There you go. They are my, um, I'm assume, let's assume that's the, they, they look like ad URLs or ad, uh, ad, ad IDs or ad set ID. Let's go and check this out. Now what I've got is my conversion rate. Once again, the numbers are quite low, so we can't read uh, too much into the significant side of things, but we've got uh, this here and we've got that here so it looks like all the ads are doing reasonably well um let's go and check this like so uh come and check that uh and go in well this is not not much there and it's a brand new ad so once again we can see that that's a really good well-performing ad uh that one uh you know a, a bit less uh and so on and so forth but this one here looks like a like a like double whatever everything else is doing so we, I'd want to start looking at that ad now. What was the hook? What is the appeal? What is the targeting? Uh, and so on and so forth. And can I can I scale that just that one out? Because it seems to be working quite well. All right. So so very quickly you start you start seeing uh, because you can see the ad uh, you can see what the ad what the what the copy was, and you'd want to go to the lander and go and see. Well, you know maybe because I'm using one lander. Uh, these ones don't resonate, but if I could just make them resonate a bit better, then it maybe it could work better. So what you do now is you want to start doing, you know, personalized lenders, which we've covered in a prior call, where you start adding in the custom fields, which you pass in the URL itself to start dynamically changing the page. Uh, I, once again, without 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 having access to the page, these are just the thoughts and the and the sort of the the, the inquiry that you want to do uh, as a way to see what's actually going on here at scale makes a massive difference. Like imagine if you took the money you're spending here um, and you just put it here, sorry, that one there, all of a sudden you 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 get a massive bump in your in your profit because you've just uh, reallocated capital into a better performing stock or investment, if you can put it that way. Any questions on this, Josh? What is the best way to blend this with the CRM data so you get the CPALs? Your cost per. Yeah, actual. so you can so so you, um, <clears throat> because this is happening on a line item. Um, so let's have a, so let's have a little data set. You you'd want to have a revenue per lead and a cost per lead at the um, at, at at a line level, and so so unfortunately one of the problems is is now is that what you're going to have to do is is go down right down to the ad level, pick up with what the what the what the, the ad cost was. And divided by the number of uh, leads that came from it, so it's a little bit of a manual work because obviously you can't just apply the same uh, cost per, uh, per acquisition or the cost per whatever um, across all of it because this might be costing you less, that might be costing you more, that might be costing you even more, so so on and so forth. So that's that. This is where it gets a little bit hairy um, because you need an API integration now into Facebook to truly populate this at scale. So my goal here would be: Can I find something that can match, uh, that can match uh, your Facebook costs um, right down to the ad set, the ad level, and then dump the uh, dump that data into 
a Google Sheet uh, or a whatever, and then do a pivot table. Now, having said that, things like BigQuery and all that sort of stuff allow you to do pivot tables as well. So Excel is not the only game in town um, for that. I'm, I'm just sharing because it's uh, accessible and cheap. And that's what I would be looking at, at, at doing. So that's where it's, the work is a bit manual. I'll see if I can find an extension. There was an extension that I used at some time. Yeah, I it's, remember you said my hands. Oh man, it's um is uh it's another version of supermetrics add something. Yeah, um it was a Chrome extension. Maybe I put attribution, it might pop up. Um I won't waste too much time on this, but I'll see if I can. Yeah. Yeah, I've um... got Polaroid traffic as well. It's just so bad now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm drawing a blank. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Uh, if I find it, I'll, I'll let you know. So once again, we can see here that there's a whole lot of uh, data available. Let's let's go down the rabbit hole a bit more. Uh, there's something I saw earlier when I was browsing through this. There you go, energy type. Let's have a look at what that is. Right. Once again, I'm not overly familiar with what this data is. I just... Uh, grabbed something that was sitting on my desktop and let's have a look at energy type All right i get things like kind of like what what's your current uh energy look yeah. like All right like uh you know your power electricity or both all right let's have a look at the conversion rates here okay gas Mm. Once again, take into account that this is not statistically significant data. Data sets too small, but if it was big, let's assume that they're working at scale here. All of a sudden, you realize, whoa, gas is where the money is. Um, um, once again, I'm also assuming that 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 the that these people are also converting in terms of the, the your your actual client conversion level. Let's assume that that's true as well. All of a sudden, you're like, right, I realize gas is where 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 the money is. And uh, and can I find uh, uh, you know a client that's willing to pay more for this? You know, there's a whole lot of decisions around how you can run your business going forward. Let's say if you are going to be a, a lead gen person, then maybe you know finding a gas person starts making sense. And then now you can run a gas centric campaign because it's obviously double the conversion rate, almost double the conversion rate of uh, of the electricity. Um, mm. If that were the case. So once again, another insight. What else can you do? Change the lander, change the copy, change the headline, change the background imagery, and so on and so forth. Because you know, now you want to optimize for just the gas people. Now you're also passing gas as an information on your node, so which is uh, sort of uh, I'm talking about here. So you're passing that information in the node level script uh, for those uh, an audience around. Yeah, that correct, well. correct, exactly, yeah, exactly. So you you have the audience uh, data available. I'm just going to do Facebook here, and uh, go and. Oops, uh, I'm going to pick that, all right. Right, so it would be sending that answer, guess whatever you want to need, um, would be sending it across in the view content event. And now that's available for you to create a 1%, 2% lookalike audience. Or alternatively, let's say for argument's sake, if we found that that these people don't convert, like let's say electricity does not, does not convert, then we can actually set the bars up as exclusions and so on and so forth. So as you can see here, all the data, the real one, one of the reasons you wanna, why you wanna push all that information back into Facebook, Google, and your ad network is when you start learning this stuff, you can start manipulating the data that's happening there. So the goal here is not just like, I'm just gonna go and just scale the spend out. You can also scale the spend while incre increasing the efficacy where imagine if you, if you diverted that capital into here, for, for argument's sake, let's say theoretically that that was possible and that was an opportunity. All of a sudden, you go from a, a, a funnel that's you know, making decent money to the funnel that's just printing money, because you're you're finally able to divert campaign uh, to divert your funds into into a better place. So that that's a recurring theme here: is are there any insights that we that we're missing out on? So that this is in this case was uh, was the energy type. Let's have a look at uh, if there's anything else that we can look at. Uh, the energy just, just yep. before we go on, I know, I know you said obviously create an audience around gas, which is a lookalike, but then you said ex you can make an exclusion on that on Facebook of, say, people with electricity. So can you exclude 
can you cross like uh, like cross the electricity people and says if they're electricity as well is it is that possible on facebook to exclude people just on that type of data as opposed to location? Uh, no it, it 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 probably won't work as well which is why i say you want to run as a test first yeah, yeah, because yeah. the fact that they pick they picked electric electricity identifies a person but if that person doesn't has not necessarily clicked something or or a comment or something that's electricity related then it, then it, then it may not work which is why yeah. a, a lot of the time it's more just it more just testing now this one here is a bit more relevant right now this one here might 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 work a bit more might work a bit better so these are people that are moving right so they're moving houses or whatever or whatever the heck this thing is and all of a sudden um here facebook may have a better idea because they might start clicking around i don't know the new suburb they after and all that really? sort of stuff yeah and so yeah so here we have uh, a conversion um, where moving people are converting better uh, than than non-moving people. Um, so I'm assuming this is moving houses or moving to a new, or whatever the moving field was. We did a campaign similar to this. We used Google traffic as a primary driver and then Facebook for remarketing. That's what worked yeah. best. That, Previous that, agencies that, were just running it on Facebook and that made no sense. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that approach. Is that is that you 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 get the intent from Google and you use Google data to populate Facebook data and then you remarket them there because you obviously you can have a bigger conversation or a much more uh, a much more uh, you know audiovisual conversation I should say uh, where you can you know have a video an image and all that kind of stuff um, and yeah that's that's a perfectly valid strategy and obviously then you can extend it out to you know you know uh, you know YouTube and uh, and tabula and whatever else there is so yeah absolutely but it's 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 amazing that people obviously these are the people who did not get through the node which is another reason why it's a blank here mm -hmm. uh, but those who do get through to the to the answer here you can see that obviously you know this is a much better uh, co converting factor uh, than than anything else so let's see what else we can find here um all right uh state Okay, let's uh, postcode. Here you go, energy supplier. That's an interesting one. Let's go and have a look at that. Now you can do moving by energy supplier or energy supplier by moving. Uh, and you can see conversion rates that way, um, right? So let's say we've got uh, AGL and uh, for AGL, uh, it's 42%. But people will say they're moving is 33, so on and so forth. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove it so we can uh, get a better idea of uh, of what we're seeing here. All right. Now, this is interesting. Um, where AGL, let's see the conversion on AGL, uh, 40%. Uh, Energy Australia uh, is uh, 22, 28% there. But origin is this. Uh, somebody else is back um, once again reasonably good conversion rates across the board i'm not sure if there's anybody bad here yeah, it looks like a pretty decent number so it looks like the 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 picking the uh, the energy supplier per se it, it itself is not uh, is not uh, seems to be a, a critical factor in the conversion rates but uh, now that you know that these are your top three or four you could start running them in the ads itself uh, where you could say people who are who are you know using click energy and energy australia and origin and blah 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 could be you know overpaying for their whatever solar whatever this this funnel was and that could be another way of 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 calling it out now because the the information is telling you where these people are coming from but let's have a look and see if there's any any bias uh, in the in the uh, in the region data All right so let's go and region Uh, and see if uh, uh, if um, where so AGL uh, obviously we've got people from California and England coming through, <laughs> which uh, is just rubbish. Uh, and then we can see that New South Wales uh, and uh, in Victoria maybe this energy company is only in, only in that particular the energy company is, is only in that specific uh, um, you know uh, state or region. And so on and so forth. So once again, you know, you 
you get to see where what's happening. Now, let, let's say for argument's sake, if we, if we found, let's let's do the, let's go the other way. All right, let's go the other way. Let's go region and and state. Um, right. So, let's say we've, we've uncovered that that one particular energy supplier has got an overrepresentation in conversion rates for that particular state. You can you can break out an entire campaign just about the energy supplier in just that state. So there's a whole lot of you know info sitting here with respect to that, um, and I'd be curious to see. Um, now, not 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 everything's going to be available to be targeted, obviously, um, but you have the, the 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 calling out of the audience that that Facebook says you can't do. You can do when you have these insights and you introduce these words back into the ad itself, because that's targeting without targeting. If you get my drift, um, because you're having a much more meaningful conversation around uh, what the what the what the audience within specific region is converting for. Any questions? No. All right. Okay. So let's have a look at uh, what else we have here. Um, I think the important lesson here is just to be really playful. Oh, here you go, property type. That's interesting. Let's go have a look at that. All right. Uh, I'm going to bring that up there. Take away the region as well. Um, all right. Okay. So we have, um, okay, not that didn't show us too much. I mean, except that homes are the ones converting. A couple of business customers came through. And a whole bunch of people who probably didn't get to the node itself of where that came through. Um, all right. So that didn't tell us much. I'm going to start from the bottom now just to make sure that uh, energy supplier, who needs cover. Okay, let's go have a look at the who needs cover part. Um, maybe cover for insurance. I'm not quite sure what that's talking about, but whatever the no people were, converted more. Once again, I, I'm, I, have, I haven't been privy to all the questions here. Who needs uh, who needs cover? I'm not sure what that refers to. But anyway, that seems to be, uh, uh, let's see if that's a significant variable. Um, 25, probably not. 36, okay. So once again, um, whatever that was, um, not, not much, uh, to gain there, what else we have? Age, all right. Okay, let's look at age. Maybe that might have something to do with uh, who's converting. Um, oh, right, they're actually asking for for the actual typed information. Um, that's interesting. <laughs> hmm, One that makes, yeah. Um, amazingly, they're all old, so I'm not sure what kind of campaign this is, but anyway, um, yeah. You can definitely see that it's uh, aiming good for based on the Facebook targeting too from this data set. Correct, exactly. So now you can see here that uh, that uh, that that age group, this one is fifty five under or whatever it is, converts at thirty two percent, and that's where most of the action is anyway. Uh, but it makes sense, obviously. Not not you're gonna find too many people ninety year old on Facebook. So you can see, yeah, that, that, that this is not this is just the volume of people that are showing showing up in the data set, right? It's not it's not uh, that fifty five year olds convert and 90, 90, 90 year olds don't. Uh, obviously, there's less of them in in the data set as well. Uh, but this is, uh, but what would be interesting to see is 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 can you overlay that with if, moving data? I'm sorry. Can you overlay that with the moving data? I'm curious how many ninety year olds are moving. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do that. Um, moving All right, let's and see the old people. So, <laughs> okay, here you go. Uh, actually, let's do it the other way and see a distribution better. Uh, all right, there you go. So, that's the no camp, and we can see how many uh, and the not moving people are, and then we can look at the yes camp, and we can see that uh, nope, there's not a lot of uh not a lot of old geezers moving um so yeah they're all staying put yeah now the 
the other thing that I wanted to share, because now that you know this, the question that I always have is, is what can you do uh, at, at this level of the DT, right? So sort of you've 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 captured the lead, you don't really care anymore. Uh, you know, I guess it'd be nice to give a thank you thing and you can thank you, but you can always put this um as another node, and you can actually get more information out of them saying, you know, what 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 inspired you to, you know, to 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 get solo today. Or what what inspired you to you know uh, getting more information after the fact because one of the one of the most powerful pieces of information that you can get is what was a catalyst for today because I'm sure everybody knows that I need to save money on my power bill I need to save on my interest rates or mortgage or whatever but what what happened today that meant that I actually started clicking on on the ads what's the trigger because if you can understand what the trigger is then you can actually bring that trigger into the ads itself by introducing that idea. So let's say if someone said that, oh, you know, I, I saw my neighbor, I don't know, he got a better rate. So you can then introduce that story into the ad where you can perhaps show that as a role play, you know, like, you know, hey, Bob, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, you know what? Oh, it's, it's, check out my new bill. You know, it's, uh, you know, down to $5 a month. It's like, how the hell did you do that? Yada, yada, yada. And you can sort of, you know, relay that, that, that lifestyle uh, thing that, or, or, or whatever that that catalyst information that you gain about the about the person, and that that is, I'm seeing very very few people doing that. Uh, it's almost like you know we got the lead. See you later. But th that catalyst information is going to be especially relevant, especially on Facebook when you can use it in those three lines before someone selects more or see more, whatever that that other that thing that pops up. That's that's the that's the. We, you're optimizing for that. And, and this information can add a lot of value in getting uh, a high click through on that. Um, so I would definitely add that in because always using uh, your DT as a market research tool simultaneously as a lead gen tool is, is super, super powerful. Right. Any, any questions on this? No, that's really cool. Nick, why, why on earth would um, people not be using this? It seems like a really simple optimization for really powerful output. It's, it's, I suppose the most obvious, simplest answer is probably the simple, the most obvious and simplest answer is probably the right one. Is just sheer apathy, laziness. Uh, it, it's or, or just or just not being aware that I could do this. I think it's probably the best answer here. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes I share this with people they're like, and they're like, oh, wow, you know, like, like mind blowing info. And it's, and it's not, was it's just obvious. Was, was uh, that you that asked the question, Jay? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah Jay. Yeah. Why are there not more people on this call? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's your answer. Yeah. Mind blowing you was the word that came to mind. Yeah. I you, you, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you why there's not, no, no, because I'm not charging $1,000 an hour for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was, that's, I was that's, having that's, a joke that's... with um, Paul earlier. We said, um, what do we say? What do we say, Paul? How do, if you change it to like how to make a million dollars in 24 hours, you get a lot more views. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But 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 you know what it is? But I, but I also found, okay, so just to kind of like a bit of backstory, the very first campaign that I ran in, in, for, for Leeds Hook was, uh, uh, was in 2016. And it was someone who was selling uh, how to get rich uh, info product. And I haven't run into a mastermind. I, I had no users. I just built the platform. We just made a SaaS out of it. And I was like, oh, it'd be good to, you know, get some people into it, see what happens. And uh, and we had about 4,000 people sign up in, in like one day. And uh -huh. I was like, all right, Facebook, step aside. <laughs> <laughs> Unicorn coming. <laughs> and, uh, and when I looked at the stats, nobody logged in after setting up their account. Because... <laughs> They were all, you know, get rich overnight because because the the hook of the campaign that was run was literally, you know, sit on your fat ass, drink pina coladas, press two buttons on Facebook, and money comes starts coming in, and yeah. and largely that's that's what the appeal was, which is which is essentially what Bizop is, uh, is in is in most Bizop Bizop offers run like that, and 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 also this wasn't a paid trap, this wasn't a paid campaign, this was run through their affiliates, so obviously. 
uh, you could you could uh, you know claim all the all the all the wildest thing on the planet that you want. I think one of the things that paid campaign does it it tones you down and keeps you a little bit honest um, with uh, with what with, to to run campaigns because obviously you know Facebook won't let you run it's just any dodgy thing you can put out there. And I very quickly learned. I had a hunch this was not going to go anywhere, and it was validated within a week. Um, and, up, and 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 there was only one guy. So of of the three thousand people or whatever x x hundred thousand people or whatever that signed up, there's only one guy out of that that I, that ever got a paid account with me, and that was John McCarthy, right? And John McCarthy uh, wanted to do what is it? This this is the funny story about John, right? Uh, he. Uh, I jumped on a call because he was like, how do I do this? How do I do this? You know, this is so cool, blah, blah, blah. So, so I said, listen, why don't you jump on a call? Let me let me help you out. So you jump on the call. I said, hey, what do you do right now? And he he picked up a ClickBank uh, book on, on potty training. Uh, it was a $7 book. And I said, I, <laughs> I don't even gonna make too much money from a $7 ebook uh, without a back end. So I said to him, I said, all right, hang on. So what do you actually, what do you do right now? He goes, oh, I sell real estate leads. I said, do you realize people go from party training to real estate? They don't. They never come back the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go from real estate leads to party training. And yeah. uh, I said, what the hell's wrong with you? He goes, oh, I thought it'll be easier. I said, no. I said, you just pick like the like like this is really, you know. Uh, I said, if the person who's selling this affiliate affiliate this uh, affiliate marketing program could get away with selling you. Uh, you know, uh, a, a course on how to do real estate leads, he would, but but he can't because obviously it's work. So I said, listen, why don't you just dump this? Just apply leads hook with solar and 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 uh, and mortgages and insurance and whatever else that you want to do. And and he basically crushed it. So he was one of the very few guys who actually uh, who actually you know scaled fairly early on leads hook. But he already had an existing market that he had a he, that was already working for him. Uh, but yeah. So just to answer your question, uh, I guess uh, maybe I should be. <laughs> charging for this <laughs> call this the mastermind <laughs> yeah i know i know a couple of mastermind where they just jump on calls and just talk like this for an hour <laughs> the, the charge uh, there's one that, there's one that i know the, the guy charges 30 grand a year just it's chatting on masterminds i'm sorry this is better than most masterminds <laughs> yeah, yeah. I stuff done. <laughs> well, anyway i appreciate you saying that uh but I'll, I'll let I'll let I'll let you, I'll let you, you guys you, you guys uh, uh, you know claim that. But yeah, but but to to long story short, uh, no one is doing this sort of stuff. I mean, this is not rocket science. It's not simple. It's just dumping data that you're already generating into a into a Google sheet. Everyone's so obsessed about getting graphs and charts out of you know out of uh, you know GA or high rows or whatever that graphic system you've got. When when literally the the scale and flexibility of dragging and dropping and 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 slicing and dicing the information that we have here, they, they, there's no greater tool that I know of. About the, about the so the next iteration of this is, and hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll I would have I've got a live example to share with you next week because I'm trying to find a so there's a couple of AI tools that are out there, but they kind of don't work when you have more than you know 500 leads. So it doesn't work that well where you actually upload your CSV file and you tell the AI to build you you know clusters. It works with very small data sets. It's kind of stops working at very large data sets but that's a matter of time right? and that would Why be the next that? thing that would be the next thing to, to look at which is you just dump this data uh just upload the excel file or csv file or whatever it is into some sort of ai tool and just chat with it saying hey listen can you tell me what the what the my ideal prospect looks like and uh and, and all that sort of stuff until that happens at scale without because so the issue i ran into that i spent a lot more time on the techie issues that were happening rather than the data, rather than trying to understand what the data is showing. That's why I didn't bring it up on this call um, because that's what I was doing actually most of today. And I found that if I share that with you, you're gonna spend nine hour, you know, 90% of your time trying to make the tech work rather than actually get an analysis. And I was like, and, and, and the conclusion I reached is like, you know what, screw that. This is just much simpler, faster and easier. As you can see, uh, we've been only on the call an hour and we literally were doing analysis of this within within five minutes because all it is is all it needs is one data set like this. You go mm -hmm. to insert, click click the pivot table button, and off you go. That's it. I mean, literally takes about you know sixty I it was seconds. Much harder. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I thought it was going to be much harder with the pivot tables, but this is actually nothing. Is you you all all yeah because 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 what the pivot table does it it takes the top line here and turns them into variables, and then and all and it's a matter of slicing and dicing the data. What people find very very overwhelming is is what the hell do I put here? So mm -hmm. most times, yeah, you want to put the you want to put count. 
Now, I, I haven't gone into the advanced stuff that you're going to have here, which is you can put a mean, average, standard deviation, all that, all, all that other sort of information. Not needed. Um, you know, we can just look at basic count here. Um, honestly, this is the simplest way. And then, and then I put my conversion here, which usually ends up being yes and no, so that so I can very quickly see where my conversions are coming through. But really, uh, that that's it. That's, that's about as, as fancy as this thing gets. And then you take all the other data that you've got available, and you put that over here. Now, if you did add that extra question in here, such as, you know, what, what was the catalyst for you today, yada, yada, yada. But those will be available as custom fields for you to then uh, just drag and drop here. And you very quickly see like, oh, wow, I didn't realize of, of everyone who converted, uh, you know, the main reason today was because they, you know, whatever, some social circumstance or perhaps uh, receiving a power bill in the in the mail, um, mail, uh, you know, you know, was the catalyst to 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 start doing this search. Because if that's the case, then now that gives you the narrative or the storyline or whatever you want to call it in your YouTube ad, in your Facebook ad, or whatever. You can start using that idea. And so you no longer have to sit around on a blank page trying to think of what should my story about. You know, I mean, all the gurus will tell you, stories sell. Well, story about what? Well, why don't you just ask the market what story you should be doing about? And that would be that question that I just shared with you, would tell you what are the different narratives that you should build your storyline about. No more guessing. Yeah, it's incredible. You don't see that asked at the end of every single one, incentivized and just yeah. ripped up. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, what I saw. Photo... Sorry. I'm sorry. What was the question again? Oh yeah, what what inspired you to to wanna you wanna get a, you know a solar um, you know discount today, or yeah. or what prompted you to to want to do this? And you can just could be just a multiple choice question. You know, got a power bill, got something else, and other, and just you know please type your answer. And that's it. Um, that that's that's the like what really uh, what I've found is is that the people who convert understanding the emotional, psychological, whatever you know that that data is super powerful because you build storylines around that data, and that means that there's a whole lot of people out there who you could induce the catalyst with. You know what I mean is that because. Like it's one thing to for me to get the so let's say for example if you do want to learn that the catalyst was that I got a power bill in the mail today, right? And that was really pissed me off. So I started searching. Let's say that is the catalyst. Well, now you can sort of almost create a storylines, you know, around you know you know how to not dread the power bill um, and and have another month where you're going to be paying you know more than x hundred dollars per month. Now I'm bringing that inception almost like inception marketing, I guess. That, that concept that induced one person or a group of people that converted, but now you're you're bringing that to the rest of the market. And you could say that I'm obviously calling people out. Yes, of course you are, but you're doing it in such a subtle way that's compliant uh, in most respects or hidden. So that's a strong incentive for the salespeople as well. Correct. Yeah, 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 of course. You you take that now, that data, and you take it to your sales guy. You know, and uh, say, okay, hey, so uh, you can even start this conversation. So, um, how did the last power bill feel? You know, <laughs> yeah, it's it's the old adage: if one if one person said it, then a hundred people Correct. are thinking it. You know what I mean, so Correct. it's just it's just a, a theme that you run. Correct, but also, Paul, it gives you a distribution. You're like thirty percent of people came here today because of the power bill. Twenty percent yeah. of people came here because of whatever. You know, and so now it starts giving you the the four or five storylines that yeah. you could run your ads with. And all of a sudden, you're not guessing anymore what your ads should be about. And guess what? You're the only guy in your market that knows the five narratives that gets conversions. As opposed to just copy and pasting everyone else's ads. and just, Correct. Yeah, rather yeah, rather than roaming around other people's ads manager. Or, yeah. you know, or what do you call the uh, library? <laughs> trying to copy. <laughs> because when you copy, obviously, you don't know whether it works. In this case, yeah. you've got data why it works. And, and now your goal becomes, let's cut out all the stuff that doesn't work. But they don't know that you're targeting in a very specific way to cut out the fat that is not converting. So even if someone copies you, ad, they still can't get your conversion rates because you've got the negative audiences or the targeting or the or whatever it is yeah. to, 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 to not have those people coming into your funnel. And so it's almost like, like, like an unhackable funnel. Huh. Sure. Uh, one thing that I learned as well based on this is GRP decision node before the decision tree starts. 
and split yeah. it off as a negative audience. Yes. But will that you you obviously they're not going through to the end, but unfortunately you're still paying for right, you're paying you're for the few of them, but it's training Facebook not to give you that yeah, it's to people. push it, push it out there. Yeah. So I think yeah. based on that seven day example that we had, that would have extrapolated out that 20% out of data, that would have cost us 20k. Hmm. Based on no, like, no, like, no. When, when you move to places like YouTube, so so just to talk a bit about Google for now, or YouTube is in particular, so, sometimes you'll get about 30, 40%, 50%. Uh, I've seen up to 90% fake traffic or traffic outside the region and all that sort of stuff. So this is where this starts getting really powerful. So you might start one day, you're like, oh, you know, YouTube doesn't work. I'm like, yeah, but give it a week. You can have some data, take the data back, and then now start using that to train Google to start giving you better, um, you know, to start removing uh, those 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 uh, those leads that are not converting for you. Um, Nick, so there's a few uh, new laws being passed for telesales in Australia. Okay, we need to start using Active Prospect. I was reading through the documentation. It says you need to use custom domain. Okay, you mean you you mean lead ID, lead ID. Uh, you mean the trusted form thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. do you need to, can you, do you have to do direct link to the Facebook decision tree or can you use it as a, so as a custom? No, no, no. The, implement, the implementation is super simple. In fact, I was just uh, messing around with that because I'm I'm rewriting the article for it. So just give me one sec while I bring it up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, trusted form. So we've got it already done before, but I just need to make sure it's yeah. Done right, right. Okay. So, so all you do change. Yeah. No. No. There, there's some changes yeah. coming through. Um. Just. Just a. A. A better script. Um, yeah. Right. So in the version that I'm working with here, let's go here. All right. So this is. So the script they provide is obviously a small version of this, but. Um, the script itself is not tied to you in any particular way. So it's not like a Facebook pixel that's got an ID sitting on it. It's a generic script. And if you have a look, there's no uh, pixel ID, there's no account ID, there's none of that stuff here. So you, any, everyone can use the same script. So what, what what I did today, and this was one of the tests I was doing, is, is when the script fires to update, uh, think of it as a pixel, to update a, a, um, a custom field called trusted form fired, and it's going to put yes or no. Because one of the, uh, and the reason for this is because someone said, hey, you know what? My trusted form is not saving. DT set field is not firing. And I'm like, that's assuming that the actual script itself fired. Because if this doesn't fire, then there's nothing to save. So so we that would be the first. So I'm going to give you an option to, to do that. And then, so that just copy and paste that, just like you would a Facebook pixel. And then what you do is, uh, I think it's in this one here that I've got. And then there's a node level script. And the node level script looks like, if it loads up, all right. And the node level script basically looks like this, where what you do is we we grab we grab the um, the trusted form certificate, and we save it into uh, a um, a custom field called trusted form certificate URL, and that's the custom field that you'll push to your clients, whether they you know in the uh, in in your webhook into lead byte or whatever the lead distribution platform that you're going to use. And that's it. That's that's the that's the only application there is. Generally speaking, so what this does, this ties what it's actually doing is it's going to, you know, obviously grab the URL where the where the where the um the um uh the 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 phone number was given uh and the URL and the time, and the date and all that sort of stuff. So it's it's like a third party verification. Is it best to do the auto retain option as well, or is there a way to save a bit of cash and download it within that ninety day period? You mean to say for you guys to do trusted form? It yeah, it'll cost us an extra, a decent bit extra to do the trusted form as well as do the retain option. So they give you an option to generate it, and they give you another option that's like doubles the price to retain it. 
Um, yeah, so I, I guess retain it and, and download it if there's if there's an uh, um, I, I think there's an API that where you can actually claim and retain uh, and just grab the the, the details um, and that will be the best way to best way to do it. But for the only reason uh, is is that if it's for your internal um, sales teams, then then obviously there's no point paying for it and retaining it. Just you might as well just uh, uh, yeah. just uh, yeah so save it to That's your own database. Easy. Yeah. Or the best thing would be to do would be to make an API call and save it against in in Go High Level or whatever CRM you guys are using, to to save it against the lead record itself, and therefore it remains a yeah, permanent. Yeah, that'd be the the record, but it'd still be on their servers. I think you'd have to retain the certificate as a PDF or whatever it is. Oh, but that I think okay. they might have a video yeah. as it's well. It's like but... like an upsell for for the the company. It's like now they keep it for for you. But yeah, I think it's it is three months, isn't it? Josh, it's nine days. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Uh, but um, again, if if you have a governing body that comes after ninety days, yeah, and makes a complaint, you, you, your yeah. ass is not covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably. I think it's probably gonna make sense to keep it to just pay the extra fee, but. Yeah. You, how much? How, yeah. how much do they charge? How much do they charge? It's fifteen cents for the generating of the your of the certificate itself, and then it's fifteen cents per record to retain it. Can you can you download that as well? That's what I'm figuring out. <laughs> I'll ask you if you had anyone go through this. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm actually my my knowledge of that that part of it is actually quite quite limited. Uh, beyond generating, um, I'm not too sure. Or if you want to download, you you, you gotta you gotta pay for that thing anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't doesn't like um, once obviously selling the lead and then you're passing it usually the trusted form is for the the buyer to know it's an exclusive lead that's kind right. of yeah, what right. a little bit a little bit different this one so the the partner that you've spoken to paul um he's got another company his own company and they generate a specific type of lead within the industry that governing body has asked us has given an industry-wide decree that you can't do telesales anymore and you yeah. need express prior consent in order to um, contact a lead. Yeah. So this is just proof that you've got the press, express prior consent. Okay. And then when the guys are calling, they've got a specific script to say, hi, blah, blah, blah. This is this from this. Yeah. Previously, contact us about this. Just before we enter, I just need to confirm that that's correct. Okay. All right. A little bit. It's internal, in, kind of internal systems. But we're still looking to get those processes in place so we have a record that the so so what you're telling me is that the client is not requesting this it's you're doing it just to make sure that if anything happens different different to the main business it's yeah. the partner that yeah the okay. partner that has another industry okay yeah so we just need to make sure that that particular top lead has a record of them signing up I, think I suppose eventually, that, if, eventually if, Australia if will go this way. All these yeah, no. Up. If it's if it's so if it's that risky, then you know what? Fifteen cents might be just a cost or peace of mind. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think eventually all industries will go this way, especially. Yeah, everything's going this way. You know. Yeah. yeah I think that's great. Yeah. yeah, it's great for us. Yeah. 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 It's it's like, it's this is great it's, for people that know what they're doing. Yeah, it's the more legal uh, legal hurdles and compliance that pops up. You know, the 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 I guess uh, entry. Oh, it just reads people. Yeah, it's it's not that simple anymore to just uh, you know buy a ten dollar course and and start generating leads. I mean, I mean, you might be able to do that, but then once you add in, you know, the data integration stuff, the the, the tracking analytics stuff, plus all this uh, compliance stuff, it starts getting into the too hard basket, and most people weed themselves out. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Any other questions? So quickly, Nick, why did um, you mentioned previously about pushing the data like five hundred records? Why on earth would the AI struggle with such a small, seemingly small number? Oh, it's uh, right. The reason for that is because, I'll share my screen actually. Um, is and I saw this uh, earlier this week. Uh, am I? Um, I'm sharing my screen, right? No, sorry. Share screen. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't cut out. Right. So one of the things, uh, so earlier this week, someone said to me they had done a version one and version two split test. 
and they said that version one works better uh, than than version two. And uh, and so I had a look, and it's a split test had been run over two days, and it very limited data. And so in any split test, you know, you're going to see a lot of volatility when your data is quite small. And so I said, all right, let's run the test for another four or five days. And as soon as the more data came through, V2 started performing better. And that also became a much more statistically significant outcome. And that's that's why uh, dealing with small data sets, they, you want to use them as almost like a like a guidepost, but but do come back later and and look at a largely uh, a larger data set. So that's why, um, if in your case, let's say for example, if you the volume is not going to be high, but the value is quite high, then you can use it as your early guidepost. Obviously, if you say, hey, what's the catalyst? And even if you have like hundred leads and you know eighty percent say you know because it's tax time, then it really is the catalyst to introduce into your ads around you know you know in, at tax time do this. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, so you don't need, uh, uh, you know, that's good enough to start because in the real world, you may never get to statistical significance. Like a lot of people talk about this sort of these sort of concepts and they forget that not, not, not everybody is a Microsoft, you know, not, a, not everybody is a, a, a Google that's running, you know, millions of uh, impressions a day so that they can get uh, statist uh, statistically stati uh, significant results and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, most people are, are running campaigns where the rules of uh, stats will have to be broken because by the time you get uh, that kind of data, you know you would have overspent to get the data. So, which obviously, which you'll never do in business, which is uh, just to overspend just so I can get a statistically significant split test. So that and that's that's the reason why. So if if you don't have a lot of data, then the goal here is not to not to say, hey, listen, I, I can't do this until I have data, but realize that, that what you may be seeing uh, is a, almost a fluke and you may see, you know, outcomes that are not quite real. But if you were to take that information and start running ads with it, that will very quickly validate for you whether that idea was good or not, which I think is the bigger lesson here, is not letting any of this stuff hold you back and just take action. Because uh, if, if, you're, if you're running low volume traffic, uh, you know, you might you might say, oh, I might have to run my test for six weeks, which is just a little bit little bit stupid. If if that if, um, just to just to run just to spend money for the for the purposes of 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 getting enough data, does that answer the question? It is a very valuable point. I don't know that it answers the question, and I'm not sure whether okay. I articulated it well. You were running Sorry. through pivot table, and yep. you were. Um, showing some of the fields on the right hand side yep. and you were saying ai struggles ai yep. with you know oh yes sorry with that i meant if i were to uh, so here's an example um earlier today I'm messing around with uh, with uh, claude right so so let's say i go to attach a file like this is the ai one um Beyond 500 lines or 1,000 lines or whatever, this this actually like it's it it can't even process the information. So now you're messing around with removing some, uh, you know, bringing. Uh, so what I'm saying there is that if I were to take an Excel file, like this, and have a not not that let's say that data, uh, and if I had 10,000 lines on it, which is what's needed to get good analysis, yeah, just just uploading becomes a challenge, and and so the so the AI right now is not quite prime time yet. Now, that's not to say that you can't find some, some super high value, some guy charging you 10 grand a month AI that will suck all this data and work quite well with it. But generally speaking, uh, data of this size to use the kind of tools that we want to use, like, you know, chat GPT or cloud or whatever, there, uh, this level of data that we need uh, is, 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 is it's not able to process that much at least at this stage. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, no problem. Sorry, I, I answered the wrong question. Can no, 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 I rephrase right. that, Nick? Equally valuable. Yeah. <laughs> Can I rephrase that? Sure. Go for it. Consumer AI, like ChatGPT, sucks for business level data. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a better uh, way of saying it. <laughs> 
Um, I'm going through the experiments. I think I've stuffed something up. So I'm seeing like massive sample size and one of our things. And like, it, all right. Hey, listen. So, uh, well, yeah, well, just, just, just PM me that so I can uh, look at yeah. it in a bit more detail offline. Yeah. I'll do it. Cool. All right, guys. There's no more calls. Same, same time, same place next week.